Hi, I'm Jesse Shapiro from Brown University. And I'm Chris Hansen from the University of Chicago. Together with Simon Frey Aldenhoven from the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia and Jorge Perez Perez from Banco de Mexico, we want to introduce you to a series of videos on visualization, identification, and estimation in the linear panel event study design. We made this video series as a guide to help researchers understand the basics of linear panel event study designs. As you can see in this figure from a recent paper, the fraction of NVER working papers and articles in leading journals that use these kinds of designs has been increasing rapidly in recent years. We hope that the material in these videos will provide a basis for researchers to implement these designs in their own research. The material in the video series is based on our paper, Visualization, Identification, and Estimation in the Linear Panel Event Study Design, which is available as an NBR working paper and on our websites. Also, a lot of the estimators that we'll talk about are available for you to use in a Companions Data Package XT event, which you can download from SSC or from our websites. In this first video of the series, we'll introduce linear panel event study designs, talk about a little bit about the formal setup and notation, and give an outline of the rest of the videos in the series. So let's first talk about the data and set up we're thinking about. We're imagining a situation where we have an observational panel, where we have a cross-section of units I, these might be, for example, US states, and we have a time series for each of them of periods T. These might be, for example, years. We're interested in learning the effect of some policy that we'll call Z, say, the minimum wage, on some outcome that we'll call Y, say, the rate of employment. We will model the relationship between the outcome variable and the policy of interest using a linear panel model, where the outcome depends on fixed effects, time effects, control variables denoted QIT, and the policy variable itself. We will allow the policy to have a dynamic effect on the outcome variable of interest, captured by the parameters beta. The parameters beta are then going to be the objects of interest. The dynamics may be because of anticipation or delayed effects. We're going to allow the policy to have effects on the outcome up to G periods in the past and up to M periods in the future. Importantly, we also include a component capital CIT, which we'll call an unobserved confound. This confound may potentially be related to the policy variable and will lead to identification and estimation issues. It's clear that policy effects are not going to be identified without substantive restri restrictions on this confounding variable. Different restrictions on the confound will lead to different identification strategies and different estimators. The motivation behind putting different restrictions on the confound will come from different assumptions about the economic problem at hand. A setting that will be used throughout all of our examples in the rest of the series is a setting that we'll call staggered adoption. In this setting, the policy of interest is binary, so it takes values zero or one, and each observational unit may adopt the policy at a different time. So the policy starts at zero for all units, and then it switches to one when each unit adopts the policy. Once a unit adopts the policy, it stays adopted for the entire time range we observe. While we carry this example throughout, it is important to note that it's not required for what we're going to talk about. With these basics in hand, let us now tell you about the rest of the series. On the next video, Jorge will tell us about how to estimate these models and how to make event study plots. Then Simon will talk about suggestions to improve event study plots and will give us some examples using this data package XT event. After that, Simon will talk about identification strategies that do not use proxy variables or instrumental variables. And then Jorge will talk about identification strategies that use proxies or instruments. We'll then turn to evaluating the performance of the different estimators that we analyze. Jorge will talk about the performance of these estimators in settings with homogeneous policy effects, and in the last video, Simon will talk about settings with heterogeneous policy effects. We've done our best to design the videos so that you can watch them individually or in sequence. We hope that they will be useful to you in your research, and thanks for watching.